Hello, cooking enthusiasts. This week's video should be relatively quick. I'm continuing my journey of using freshly milled flour. If you saw my video from a few weeks ago, you'll know I got a KitchenAid grain mill attachment and I made some basic flour tortillas, and some bread. This week is all about my first time making pasta using freshly milled flour. Now, I didn't actually film the milling of the grain because it's not that exciting. In the previous video, making the flour tortillas, I was using basically 100% freshly milled flour to get a sense of the grain's flavor. However, for bread, pasta, and many other applications, I'm always going to be using a decent amount of store-bought flour as well. The freshly milled flour is providing amazing flavor, but there's a number of structural and textural advantages that a more refined flour brings. For this pasta, we are going for a southern Italian style of dough. I would say probably 90% of homemade pasta recipes are based on a northern Italian style. Northern Italian pasta is generally regular wheat flour, and the primary source of hydration is eggs, whereas southern Italian, as well as pretty much any dried pasta you buy is made from durum wheat. Durum is just a slightly different type of wheat. It doesn't work as well for bread making, but it's amazing for pasta. It's generally made with just this flour and water, and honestly, 80% of the time, I prefer it to egg-based pasta, even when I am making it myself. Now, one more complication is that the more common form of durum in most stores is semolina, which is a very coarse, unrefined version of durum flour. For this, I'm using a actually much more finely milled and refined version of durum flour, which is a little harder to find, but something I highly recommend. So, this dough was 60% durum flour and 40% freshly milled einkorn, which is a very flavorful ancient grain. Specifically, it was 30% milled and then sifted einkorn, and 10% whole einkorn that we first lightly toasted in a frying pan. We were going for roughly 40% hydration for the dough, which is even a little high for some pasta dough, but there's lots of variables when working with freshly milled flour. We were having some trouble getting the dough to really come together and become a cohesive dough ball. So 
we decided to vacuum seal it and leave it overnight. Even if you were going to work with it same day, vacuum sealing is a really good way to accelerate hydration of the dough. Now, when it came time to actually rolling out the pasta dough the next day, we ran into some issues. Fortunately, these are very similar issues to when I was making homemade ramen dough, so I knew exactly how to deal with it. For the pasta roller I am using, the widest setting really isn't that wide. So if you have a dough that's a bit tough or behaving dry, the first time you try to push a piece through, it can essentially completely fall apart. Now, obviously, this result is not ideal, and it does take a little bit of time to fix, but it's not an insurmountable problem to fix. There is a number of reasons this could happen. Again, primarily a dough behaving too dry or generally being tough. In previous attempts at ramen dough, the issue is that it's almost impossible to hand roll the dough thin enough to properly fit into the machine. In this instance, the freshly milled flour was again just making it act a bit tough and dry, even though I believe there was technically enough hydration in the dough. Really, the only solution is to start taking some of the bigger pieces that came out when the dough fell apart and start feeding them in the machine together two at a time. Slowly but surely, you're going to be combining and rolling these medium-sized pieces together until you get at least a very jagged sheet of pasta dough. At this point, you can start layering on multiple little pieces to continue bringing the dough back together. And remember, this is all on the largest setting, but eventually you will gather all of the dough you are currently working with back into one piece. And it should be noted that we are currently working with one quarter of the actual dough batch, and the rest of the dough is still vacuum sealed. This is approximately 220 grams of dough, and it will become two portions of pasta. Once we had the dough all together, it was time to develop some of the structure and get the sheet to its final thickness. This is the lamination or the folding and rolling of the pasta at the same thickness. And once again, I am employing some techniques that I tend to use when making ramen noodles. All of the techniques I'm about to explain are to maximize the gluten formation. With ramen dough, I'm doing that because I want the noodles to be chewy. With this pasta dough, I'm maximizing gluten structure because I know there's a number of factors that are inhibiting gluten formation. From what I understand, einkorn in general is a lower 
gluten flour and the 10% we left whole contains some bran which also interferes with the structure. Basically, the key thing is that we are always rolling the sheet of dough in the same direction, whereas many other types of pasta, you fold the dough and then you rotate it before you laminate. Now, because we aren't rotating the piece of dough, it will sometimes get too wide to comfortably fit into the pasta roller, in which case you need to do what I call a hot dog fold, where you fold it to become narrower. I always like to do at least a little lamination with the dough all as one piece, but then you can quickly cut it into the individual portions, which in this case was two sheets of pasta. You try to do the same number of lamination steps to each piece of pasta dough using your spritz bottle of water as needed. Once you work it a little bit on the largest and second to largest setting, the pieces of dough should begin to look nice and smooth and even. You can then start to roll the pasta thinner and thinner. For this first batch, we went to number four of nine, so moderately thick, and then this eventually became basically spaghetti. We also rolled some of the rest of the dough even thinner, all the way to number six on the settings, and this became fettuccine. Despite the troubles in the beginning, the rest of the dough that we ended up working with worked out much more smoothly and did not fall apart like in the beginning. But that is pretty much it for this week's video. Stay tuned for next week where I will be cooking this pasta and using it in two different recipes. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Otherwise, thank you for watching.